Originally, we weren't going to review Rampage this week, but then there was a debut. I watched it almost live, a few minutes behind, and I told you I thought you needed to watch it. Everyone went crazy (laughs) for it, so we ended up watching most of Rampage, at least, correct? Well, yes, because I was going to watch one match, and then you made me watch another one, so I ended up watching two. But uh, the one you were speaking of, of course, was the the long-awaited debut. They said hook in. Hook came in to save the day. The wrestling debut of Taz's son, Hook. And <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, they they introduce Sting, the man they call Sting, or the man they call Vader, or whatever the far as some preamble to some of these one-word name guys, right? I'm wondering if they should, here comes Hook! Like, you remember the Daredevil comics, the Marvel comics, Daredevil? Here comes Daredevil, the man without fear. It could be, here comes Hook, the man with weird hair. What did they say? They did say, like, this is Hook, or they said something. Well, they could say something else, is what I'm saying. See his a lot hair, of people saying that. His hair and Jamie Hayter's hair. You watch them come to the ring and it bounces up and down. It puts you in a trance. This hair is going to be the most over hair in the wrestling business. His, the, it, I think people have called it unfortunate in the past, an unfortunate head of hair or just we- or whatever, but the hair fits him perfectly. Uh, his opponent was Fago Del Solo from Mobile, Alabama, the luchador from Mobile, Alabama. Um... So obviously they they wanted somebody that's athletic enough to do his shit and at the same time small enough that he could move him around and you know whatever. But uh, the the spotlight was on Hook here, and I love this fucking kid because before we have not seen him do enough to know whether he could do anything or not, and it kind of you know was like this the the rib and there's Hook standing there doing nothing. But fuck, he's in great shape. Uh, but more importantly, he's got attitude, the the facial expressions, and the way he comes off, you know, when he's fucking healing the people. And he was heelish in his demeanor already. You know, he's got some natural things you can. I know Taz has been, obviously, I'm sure, training in him. He's been training with, a, I'm sure, a bunch of different people. But he's got shit you can't really teach if his personality was a bag of wet fucking lettuce. And he just carried himself really good. And he went, especially when he knew he was getting over and he knew he was doing well, he got a little extra, you know, oomph in his a little hitch in his get along there. But he does the judo throws. He's smooth with it. He's got a different kind of style than just everybody else. And a lot of it is his aggression. Even though he's green, he was aggressive, and he wasn't out there scared to say boo to a goose, as Adrian Street would say. Um, And then finally, he foiled old Fago's tornado DDT, hit him with a clothesline, hit him with that. That's a, I don't know what they call it, but it's the Tazplex thing that Taz used to use, right? Where he traps the, kind of like a Cobra sleeper and takes him over his head. The Taz mission? No, that wasn't the Taz mission. It was something else that was the Taz mission. Tazplex. He was Tazmified, yes. He was Tazmified. Um, He needs, he needs work on those cross faces. Because as he stood over the guy, he started cross facing him. I think. That was the only thing I missed. Noticeably, well, uh, one, uh, one or two of them missed. One or two of them, the reason why it may have been because the other two were live rounds, I don't, but it didn't look <laughs> smooth. I don't know. Um, but he needs a little work on that. But then he rear naked choked the guy and he fucking tapped out. It was great. And, you know, I remember, God, it was a couple of months ago, we were talking about you can't see and I'm not saying this was a, the greatest debut in the history of pro wrestling or it was like, you know, Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania, which obviously had more high-priced talent involved and a lot more, you know, uh, uh, rehearsal, if you will. But I said on a show a few months ago, you never get to see anybody anymore that when you first see them, they're like, oh, shit, wow, ho. Oh like you used to before everything was recorded and put on the worldwide internet. You could always find somebody that would surprise you that would, you know, but in this case they managed to do it because if anything, 
from the way that he's just been hanging around I, and a couple times he got physical several months ago and threw some kicks that didn't do him any favors. You kind of had, it was that old mad TV skit lowered expectations. And all of a sudden he's far exceeding them and the people are getting into it. And so it was a combination of, it was a really good debut and he's got a lot of talent and a lot of oomph to him, to his personality. And people were just surprised because it was better than they thought it was going to be and better than it had a right to be probably. So I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. You know, he's been such a fascinating character that the fans really started taking to. Remember, like, there was even, like, a pop when Punk said, send Hook. Yeah. <laughs> because there's been this mystery about, around him. He has a hairdo, like, it's not Flock of Seagulls. It's kind of like Flock of Seagulls go to Long Island now. <laughs> but it, get shit on by the seagull. Yeah, but, you know, my 12-year-old daughter saw that, and she was intrigued. And he carried himself well. He didn't crack. At no point did you see him smile and think, oh, this guy is playing a character. You said he started playing it up. It was like, remember when Sid came in as a heel in 89, he started doing things, and as soon as he started hearing any reaction from the fans, he would turn <laughs> and look to where they were, and then yeah. they would react more. Hook, same thing. He's con He was controlling them. Yeah. You know, once once that he saw that it was getting over and he and they were getting into it, then he, oh, okay, I got these motherfuckers now. I wouldn't have given Fuego del Sol as much as they did. Yeah. I may have kept it a little shorter. It's not the biggest complaint in the world, but showed a ton of potential. And he has a great look. And I will never discount a wrestling promoter's ability to fuck shit up. <laughs> but AEW... And we've only seen him once, so let's not go crazy. This isn't Owen Hart, you know, when he debuted and he was the greatest wrestler anyone had ever seen before. We just saw this guy, but AEW has several people that within five years, they're all still going to be in their 20s. Hook, MJF, Dante Martin, Darby, especially Darby Crash, Darby Allen. Darby Crash. He's based on Darby Crash. Apparently, he's Darby Crash and Gigi Allen, and that's why he's Darby Allen. I did, okay, I didn't know there was a Darby Crash. Oh, yeah, Darby Crash, also known, maybe the funnier name is Bobby Pin, but Darby Crash was the lead singer of the Germs, who are a legendary, infamous, influential punk band from L.A. He famously, both him and Gigi Allen both overdosed on heroin. He overdosed on heroin they think it may have been a suicide thinking, you know, he wanted to do this. He was having a rough life and unfortunately didn't get a lot of coverage because he decided to overdose on the same night that John Lennon was murdered. Go oh, God! So it was other than like Rodney Bingenheimer's show in LA, it wasn't even like a blip on the radar anywhere because it was John fucking Lennon. See, now that's a cosmic rib. You couldn't have fucking done it two days beforehand or waited a week, huh? But that was Darby Crash, and then Gigi Allen. You're very well aware of Gigi Allen. I know you're a big fan. Hey, well, yeah, I'm very well aware of Gigi Allen. Hit yeah. songs like Suck My Ass, It Smells, and Bite It, You Scum. <laughs> and get, get Your Fucking Car Off My Fence. That was a big <laughs> hit he had on the country charts. But my point was, Sammy Guevara, you could probably put on the list, AEW has a lot of intriguing... And some that have already shown a lot of real talent, and some that are sh still in the potential page. Powerhouse Hobbs. The Gun Kid. There's a lot of people. The Young Gun. There's a lot of people who are young, who even if you want to look at AEW three years from now, five years from now, they're still going to be in their 20s. They're developing better than NXT, if things work out, a better crew of stars for the next five years. Because they have all these people, and they're not killing them on TV. I mean... If they put Hook in there with Orange Cassidy, it's going to change the way we see things. But, I mean, it's pretty exciting, actually. I'm excited about the future when you see things like this. Well, but also, will they have enough veteran and or mainstream talent to uh, keep them from learning the bad habits that they will learn from some of the people on the roster that they may be tasked to work with? Therein lies the, the rub. Well, it depends on when you're talking about. You're talking about three years from now, five years from now. Who will be going to AEW? Will Seth Rollins be finally ready to accept his fate by then, or will he still be worshiping Vince McMahon? We don't know, but it's intriguing. Well, and, and, and look, they have... The other thing is, I said that my daughter watched. AEW's younger guys 
appeal to wrestling fans, but they could appeal to girls. The Young Bucks don't appeal to girls. Right. Hook, even MJF, because girls like to hate him. I've seen this <laughs> in my house with my kids and sometimes their friends watching if I have it on. Darby, Sammy, like these are people that actually appeal to girls and uh, teenage girls even. So I think there's something there. There really is. Now, wait a minute. You mean that the teenage girls aren't just all their hearts a, a flitter and a Twitter for Grayson Waller or uh, some of the NXT kids over there? No, you see, Hook, they think they can beat them up. I actually said this the other day to someone in AEW. Hook, because I watched my daughter watch the match with me. You know, like the girls now, they used to be this stupid show called Kirby Buckets with this stupid fucking kid. I forget what it was on. It was like Disney or Nickelodeon. Kirby Buckets? Kirby Buckets. The head writer must have been a Minnesota Twins fan. Kirby Puckett, Hall of Fame player. So the kid became Kirby Buckets. He was a little dweeb on the show. I only know this because years later on Cobra Kai, which is a hit show and it's fantastic for anyone my age grew up with the Karate Kid, this Kirby Buckets putz, he's now got a mohawk and he's hawk. And he's still, he's a putz, he's Kirby Buckets, but the girls now like him because he's got kind of like that hawk edge. That's the kind of shit with Hook. These girls see someone like that with that attitude, they like that. And again, I think there are wrestlers that appeal to women and wrestlers that appeal to girls. Like the Von Erichs appealed to girls. The Young Bucks don't appeal to girls. I hate to go back to them over and over. I'm using them as an example. It's not even to really hit on the Young Bucks being unappealing to women. Oh, what about the Puddin' Gang? With old Muffin Top Taylor, I'm sure he's a sex symbol. I don't know. You you have a lot of young guys in their early 20s. There's something that could be done there. As long as none of them are fucking crazy sex pests or something. <laughs> There's something to be done there with marketing them towards girls and women. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, it's as long as none of them are crazy sex pests. You have to say that nowadays with wrestling. You never know. I... You get behind someone, you support them, and then it turns out, oh my God, they've been... You know, sharing fucking photos of women they defecate on with everyone they've ever met. You never know. I think most of the guys in this business these days under the age of 25 would have to go into serious training to become sex pests, to know how. Good. Um, but as, as far as, let it be known that Hook's debut and the young movement in AEW had Brian Last pounding on his desk here on this program today. I was doing that for edits. Edit me here. Edit me here. I don't, want, <laughs> don't let anyone hear this. It's too you complimentary. Edit this. <laughs> you were worked up and you're, and you're, you're giving the Sermon on the Mount. There. But, you said, and, but you know what? You said something really important before, and I hadn't thought about it in that context, but we've seen it a few times lately, where you actually get excited to see someone for the first time. You don't get that. And we've received a lot of emails. I think we may have talked about it on the show, but again, XT, even though you're seeing these people on TV, in a normal world, you'd be excited about seeing these people go up to the main roster and get an opportunity. That would always go away quickly. You'd realize what was going to happen. Hook's a guy we've been seeing for a while. You actually finally get to see it. It wasn't just me. If you saw Twitter, if you saw different places, people went nuts over this yeah. guy. And, and, and that's an yes. excitement you don't see a lot nowadays. Well, and and again, it's it's a comment. It's a perfect storm. We use that analogy after the events of the last week. Um, you got a kid that really is good. He's it, it attracted attention by the bizarre method of not really ever doing anything to the point where he was getting more attention than anybody who did anything because people were joking about him never doing anything. And you have the fact that not a lot of people are impressed with debuts anymore because not a ton of them are impressive. And so they're like, yeah, give us more of this. And that's, and that's a good thing for him. And I hope he rides it to the fucking, to the moon. Uh, that's the other guy. Man, they got to take care of Team Taz. Seriously, powerhouse Hobbs. We've raved about him and everyone sees it. Taz is great on the mic, but he doesn't really do any, like, he's not really a manager. He never goes to ringside with any of his people. He didn't go to ringside with his son. <laughs> Ricky Starks. I'm thinking he may be okay. I heard he's working on their YouTube shows and they did something the other day when Punk ran in where you finally got Punk and him. I say finally like anyone else cares, but Punk went through every member of Team Taz other than Ricky Starks. They did this Leo Dante thing, which 
I'm not going to blame Leo or Dante for the fact that in one week, the guy signed the contract and then turned back babyface for no reason. <laughs> but there's got to be something better to be done with Team Taz. And maybe it's an East Coast thing where I see it a little differently than others, but I think people would really get behind a good stable with these guys being the focus and you add to that at different points. I just wish we could... You can't develop Hobbs if you never see Hobbs. They start these projects where any number of people have potential and, okay, let's get it going, and then they just go away. Whether, you know, Pillman or Hobbs or any of the other people we've talked about, oh, geez, yeah, that was good for a couple weeks. And it, it's you don't just let people drop in every so often if you're trying to get wrestlers over. So, uh, you know, I don't... I don't know. But anyway, 